Vine Street is steps away from the site of Timothy Thomas's fatal shooting. It's also a central location that tells a tale of two Cincinnati's. Thomas's death triggered gentrification on Vine Street south of Liberty as an attempt towards social reform. But North Vine Street is still burdened with blighted buildings and criminal activity. Elements that have distressed over the Rhine long before Thomas's death. Our Monique John spoke with experts and stakeholders about why this northern part of Vine Street has not yet been gentrified like much of OTR and what locals should expect for the area in the future. Friends of the victim spray painted a goodbye message of rest in peace on the wall. Members of the Black United Front came by to clean up the area before laying a wreath in Thomas's memory. It's horrible. It's glass, condoms, all types of things are just laying out in the community where children are, are playing. And, and that should not be happening in a city like this. That was our coverage following the shooting. 20 years later, community leaders we spoke with agree that this stretch of Vine Street between Liberty and McMicken feels like it's stuck in OTR's harder times. Kind of reminds you what we used to have down here. We need we need to do some work there. A number of its buildings remain vacant and boarded up in disrepair, and a lot of the behaviors in this area are, are have continued um, for years with kind of the hanging out and um, the loitering and some of the behave the criminal behaviors. But experts tell us it's only a matter of time before this part of Vine Street is redeveloped, just like other parts of OTR. They say developers are gradually revitalizing downtown and OTR in pockets because of limited financing and manpower. These pockets of development attract crowds who will shop, live and work in the area, then give developers leverage and momentum to expand into untapped parts of the neighborhood like Northern Vine. There's been a ton of tremendous development around the Finley Market area as well, um, and you're seeing that start to creep over east to Vine Street as well. Um, so it's getting there. One of the most significant barriers is cost. I mean, the, the cost to build and renovate these historic buildings is, is pretty significant. And so for groups like us trying to develop, uh, you know, we have to get multiple layers of funding to pull something like that off. The head of the model group explains why gentrification in OTR was stunted in the first place. He points out crime and the vast number of vacant, dilapidated buildings dominating the large neighborhood overwhelmed developers. There were huge challenges geographically and a huge number of properties to address. And you can't do them all at once. And I think a lot of the efforts that failed in the past were disconnected. And so when you have a project that's scattered throughout and then surrounded by other blight, it doesn't have the same impact that you see with things that start at 12th and Vine, where you have one project that's adjacent to another project, and now one plus one can equal more than two. Experts project that the urban core's rapid development in recent decades likely won't slow down as it moves into the northern portion of OTR. Last month, local stakeholders began meeting with 3CDC as a steering committee to forge plans to revitalize Finley Playground, along with a number of other amenities nearby Vine Street. 3CDC is also working with the model group on Wilkeman, a project reconstructing historic properties around Vine and Liberty Streets to widen access to affordable housing, a key concern for local residents. It's good for the city that we have mixed income, diverse housing in our community so that African Americans can be a part of this revitalization. However, longtime residents fear being alienated from the area's redevelopment and displaced from their homes. Maurice Wagner says investing in affordable housing will be key to protecting vulnerable residents like those living on or near Northern Vine from the changes to come. I hope that the people vote to include the $50 million into the affordable um, fund, affordable housing fund, when it's time to vote. A neighborhood on the verge of yet another transformative stage of gentrification. In Over the Rhine, I'm Monique John, WCPO 9 News.